Hi everyone, welcome back to the episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmidlkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And today's question is, is grip strength a predictor of long-term brain health? And the short answer to that is yes it is. Grip strength, um, like the ability to hold something strong in your hands, grip strength, to open a jar, um, to, to hold on to something that is, that is falling, whether that be a grocery bag or whatever that may be, is and can be a predictor of long-term brain health because grip strength generally correlates with overall body strength. It's not always the case, but for the most part it is. And overall body strength is really important for many things uh, from bone mineral density, to preventing falls, and when preventing falls, that prevents hitting your head in a concussion. In a concussion. Um, that uh, strength in general is going to lead to um, better overall metabolic health, whether that be from utilizing glucose and fats and preventing insulin resistance or metabolic syndrome, which is going to also support by support the brain by decreasing inflammation, and. Overall grip strength also has been correlated with um, better sleep, um, better cognitive health, uh, less depression, all because, again, overall strength or overall uh, physical health can decrease inflammation and can um, just improve the ability for the brain to, to act more uh, quickly, act fast, and therefore to have better processing speed and the ability to just to live. So what we're gonna do in this short uh, video is just look at two articles describing how grip strength is an important biomarker for older adults, uh, not only for overall health, but for brain health specifically. So if we go to the first paper, first one is called Grip Strength, an Indispensable Biomarker for Older Adults. It's from the Clinical Interventions in Aging. And we're just gonna really look at the abstract here. Uh, and a couple of parts of the introduction. Grip strength is a largely consistent as an explanator of concurrent overall strength, like I just mentioned, upper limb function, bone mineral density, fractures, so preventing fractures, falls, malnutrition, so people that are generally malnutrition or have poor nutrition are going to have lack of good grip strength, and the other way around, cognitive impairment, depression, sleep problems, diabetes, multimorbidity, and and quality of life. Uh, grip strength has also been shown to correlate with all cause and disease specific mortality. Um, so if we look at parts of this introduction, um, basically uh, it shows that because grip strength is a biomarker for all these things, it can easily be tested with a hand grip dy dynamometer. It's just a tool that will measure the amount of pressure you're putting, the amount of force you're putting through the, the object to measure grip strength. Um, so when it comes to muscles, right, uh, the pull of muscles on bones have this like trophic effect, basically the ability that when muscles are pulling on bones, it is going to uh, pull on the bone well enough to cause the bone to develop more bone or stronger bone. And so therefore muscle strength leads to increased bone mineral density and therefore grip strength in general is going to improve bone mineral density, decrease osteoporosis on all sites, not just forearm or, or the hand, but all sites. Uh, again, because generally grip strength is going to lead to overall strength um, in the lower body as well. Um, just real quick, cognition, depression, sleep as well, uh, it's been correlated with. Um, okay, so that is that study. The next study looks specifically at 40,000 participants from a United Kingdom biobank. Basically, they associated grip strength with brain structure and mental health. So it is from 2022. Uh, it's in the British Medical Journal. Um, and here is the abstract. Um, just we talked about that we could basically look at the risk of psychiatric illness and neurodegeneration in older adults by measuring grip strength. Um, so in the results, greater grip strength was associated with better cognitive function, 
higher life satisfaction, greater subjective well-being, and reduced depression and anxiety. Uh, grip strength was also, grip strength of the females also showed stronger associations with most behavioral outcomes than males. Um, okay, there are wider associations between stronger grip strength and increased gray matter volume, so increased matter um, of the brain, especially in the subcortical regions and temporal lobes, which these areas um, have a good relation into our memory centers. Um, so overall, this large population scale neuroimaging data set, um, our findings provide the most well-powered characterization of the interplay between grip strength, mental health, and brain structure, which may, may facilitate the discovery of possible interventions to mitigate cognitive decline during aging. So I just want to go to their first image here to kind of describe this picture. Okay, so what they did is they associated um, grip strength, higher levels of grip strength led to improved quality of mental health, okay? That's what they saw at the behavioral level. Now, longitudinal level, so over 8.9 years or nine years from the baseline to the follow-up, they measured obviously grip strength and grip strength later on and their mental health. The more or the higher grip strength that somebody had at baseline had a better mental health at nine years follow-up. Then they correlated that with the brain level association. And so they also saw that the grip strength, higher grip strength led to higher gray matter volume, basically mostly uh, in these like deep regions in, in the temporal lobe, which functions more at cognitive function. Um, and this increased gray matter volume also led to better mental health and life satisfaction. So if we bring it back here, this shows, I mean, this is a this last study was a very large study with 40,000 participants that grip strength in general can predict quality of brain health uh, down the road, pre predict it. And so if we want to have good brain health, have good physical health later on, we want to work on grip strength. You can work on grip strength just by uh, holding like a nutcracker. You can do that by using a stress ball. But to be honest, the best and most functional way is to do things like lift weights and lifting heavier objects, whether that be dumbbells, uh, heavier bars, doing deadlifts, um, uh, doing just a dead hang from a bar and trying to hold as long as you can, uh, trying to do pull-ups and chin-ups as well, because all these things are going to increase grip strength and at the same time, increase physical fitness, which can not only decrease inflammation in the brain, but improve and uh, show better predictability long-term for brain health. Um, the reason why grip strength uh, correlates so well besides looking just at muscular function, we know that uh, in order to have, like uh, basically in order to have good strength, the brain needs to let the muscles just work. There's a lot of control over our tiny hand muscles because we need good precision. Well, good precision uh, means that we have all this little control to have these fine movements without having strength. Well, at the same time, our brain needs to just let go of that precision. We need to be able to let go of that precision to be able to have good strength. And that uh, those nuances, being able to go back and forth between precision and strength is really important for the health of our brain. So, uh, if you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear them. Please leave them below. If you have any suggestions for future topics, I would love to hear them as well. Thanks again and have a great day. Stay healthy.